Okay, good afternoon. This is Amel from Enfro. I'm joined today uh, by Sue from Asia Democracy Network, ADN, uh, who is based in Seoul, South Korea. Thank you very much for joining today. Um, I wanted to talk with you a little bit because South Korea is the first major election in Asia happening during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we wanted to have a bit of a uh, perspective from what it looks like on the ground, and maybe you could provide us with some details. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate. Um, I, I think maybe we should start by the beginning. How was the discussion in South Korea re regarding those elections? Uh, the decision to hold it, was that a controversial move or was, it, was that something that was decided by the society together? Hi, Mel. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I think uh, in the beginning, I, there were a lot of uh, public concern about, you know, whether or not uh, this they should go on with the elections. But uh, to be honest, uh, Korea, you know, uh, Korea's democracy is very young, and the election, the first elections, at least, you know, just started in 1988 um, after a dictatorship, and taking kind of bringing up the topic of you know, let's postpone uh, the elections or let's kind of, um, you know, do away with it. That's a very uh, controversial statement. So I think a lot of people avoided that. So I think uh, rather than even bringing up the idea of let's postponing or anything like that, they tried to think of ways to put on uh, the elections, but in, you know, changing the procedures of how they executed it. Mm. And the elections are also scheduled much in advance, I believe. Uh, usually, uh, Korea, they their elections for every elections. There's always the uh, early voting elections. It's been uh, it, it it's not something that uh, they started doing just because of this situation. Yes, uh, it's always been uh, early voting processes. And I think um, there were some uh, you know talk about let's extend the early voting instead of two days let's spread it out to three four days but um, I don't think that was able they were able to do that they just went ahead and uh, maintain uh, the two-day early voting before the 15th and then go on with the uh, scheduled voting uh, today on the 15th yes I think uh, early voting is also something that we can come back to later uh, but I was also mentioning that the date of the election was fixed I think a year ago Mm -hmm. So uh, in South Korea, they also plan things well ahead of time, mm -hmm. um, unlike some other countries where it's two months before. So the fact that you will, you knew the date a long time ahead. Mm -hmm. And um, also, I believe there's no lockdown con um, currently in Korea. People are still free to go out. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, there was no official lockdown. Uh, you know, people were encouraged to stay home or uh, physically distance themselves from others. Uh, you know, just avoid, uh, you know, big groups. And there was not much pushback on that. I think um, much of the public really, uh, you know, abided by the guidelines and recommendations, and uh, which is probably the, a very big reason why the numbers were able to be uh, reduced or at least controlled. And um, do you have any idea how the voters are reacting to the fact that there's an election? Because as you said, they, the people are, asked to stay home most of the day, but for the election, they asked to come out. Mm -hmm. So how are people reacting to that? At least from my observations, the sense was, I think there was much more pushback from the public um, on the talk of, you know, not allowing them to come out and vote. I think, uh, you know, there there were some people who were, had to, you know, uh, fear that it, it could be dangerous, but I think uh, the will of, the citizens to cast their votes was stronger. So that was not, it was more of, you know, the government's role to ensure a process where they could come safely to vote that they were looking for. So that's, that's interesting, the fact that you mentioned that there is danger, but the government is trying to uh, alleviate that danger. So what mm -hmm. are some of the ways uh, that they do this? Um, yeah, I mean, I was kind of uh, asking, you know, my colleagues and uh, friends who actually need to go in to do the vote, cast their votes. And it was very, uh, I was very impressed uh, at how the, you know, administration, uh, you know, planned all this because uh, so, you know, they're, uh, people are asked to come in with a mask 
Uh, that's mandatory. Uh, people are to stay uh, in line one meter apart. Mm -hmm. And um, there's actually a, uh, they hired more workers to be at the polling stations to disinfect the polling booths uh, periodically. Um, and there's a whole procedure where once you step into the voting area, they take your temperature, uh, they make sure you sanitize your hands, they mm -hmm. give you a plastic glove um, to, uh, you know, uh, and then that's when you receive your ballots and then go into the disinfected uh, booth to cast your vote. I see. So the, it's the same process as usual with people being spaced out mm -hmm. and being controlled in terms of temperature. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you show signs of COVID or just a fever and you, you show up at the polling station? Sure. Um, if you have symptoms or, I mean, if you have a high fever, uh, they have a special designated area that is an isolated area where they are allowed to go and cast their vote there, kind of uh, removing them away from the crowd. I see. And I assume the polling staff also has access to all of the uh, protection equipment? So gloves and masks would be mandatory? Yes, absolutely. Um, how about the, the, the people um, who are, I read that there's currently 50,000 people self-isolating in Korea. And apparently mm -hmm. there's some measures specifically for these. Yes, so um, what they set up was uh, for those who are in self-isolation, um, they're allowed to uh, go and vote after voting hours. So they designated a special time um, outside the uh, hours of where, you know, the general public comes in and they have special voting centers for them. So a lot of these people who are in self-isolation, uh, they are in uh, actually uh, close contact with, uh, you know, uh, people who are handling uh, these people who are uh, self-isolating. So there's close communication between the government, you know, checking up on their, uh, you know, progress and whatnot. So uh, they, if, once they let them know when they want to go ahead and vote, what time, I think there are special, uh, uh, you know, situations that are set up for them to come and vote away from the general public. I see. That's, that's very interesting. Um, and with regard to early voting that we already mentioned, uh, so early voting was last Friday and Saturday in South Korea. Um, how was that important in, in me mitigating the risk also? Um, I think that I, it was very important because, you know, it really, uh, you know, disperses the density of everyone coming to vote on, you know, the 15th, which is today. So I think that's why a lot of people actually took advantage of the early voting days uh, just to avoid the crowds, to avoid... Uh, a rush of people all at once. Um, and, you know, the numbers I heard, uh, it was about in the mid 20% uh, that it was the record turnout for early voters. So I think it was very important. And um, it, through the numbers, you could tell that people were very concerned and, you know, wanting to avoid big, big gatherings. So uh, I thought, um, you know, the early voting was very essential and helpful. Uh, apparently the numbers are almost 27%. So you have a quarter mm -hmm. of all voters who decided to go early. And it's not usually the practice in Korea. This is, um, are there any concerns about voter turnout that even with all these protections, uh, there will be fewer people than usual? Um, no, I think there was a lot of anticipation that people, uh, more people will come out uh, to vote. And actually this election, um, you know, South Korea just passed an amendment last year in December to allow uh, that drop the voting age from 19 to 18. And uh, this will be the first election that the 18 year olds will be able to participate in. So there's a lot of anticipation that, um, you know, the youth will come out and vote. And I think uh, with the whole handling of the COVID-19 crisis uh, by the government, and uh, it's, it has sparked a lot of interest in uh, the administration and the various political parties. So I think it, uh, at least in my opinion, I think it, it, it in kind of encouraged more people to participate. I hope so. Uh, we'll see what the results indicate at the end, of course, but mm -hmm. I hope that the turnout is not too affected by this. Mm -hmm. um, one aspect that we had questions about is what does an election campaign under COVID-19 look like? 
were people able to go out in the street and gather? That would be surprising, but mm -hmm. we'll see. What, what does, what happens during this uh, campaign? Um, usually uh, campaign season is very loud and uh, a lot of people in groups, you know, doing uh, open uh, speeches, a lot of candidates doing open speeches in public areas. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think when the COVID-19 uh, hit uh, in February, which was pretty much the highlight of when all these campaigns started, uh, had to come to a halt, which kind of put a lot of the candidates in a, uh, you know, mental frenzy of, you know, how, how should we go about this? Um, and since uh, the COVID-19 crisis, I've seen, I've observed that uh, the campaigns have really moved online. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, online uh, videos, campaign speeches done that way. Uh, candidates uh, do outdoor activities uh, like visiting markets and whatnot, but uh, they make sure that they have, you know, masks, they don't shake hands, uh, they, they don't try to bring large gatherings. And I saw a, lot, a reduction of that significantly, but a lot of the campaigns have moved online for sure. Um, do you have any idea if the candidates and political parties feel that they can uh, freely campaign or do they think that those restrictions are detrimental to the campaign activities? Um, there are, I mean, I don't think there's any uh, indication of restrictions on campaign, but I think there's social pressure on uh, a candidate who will, you know, try to gather uh, people and have more human contact. So I think uh, in because of the social pressure, they're probably trying to refrain from that. Um, so not much any, you know, legal uh, repression or restrictions on that, but more from you know, it, 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 if doing anything against the social distancing or physical distancing guidelines, I think they know that'll hurt their campaign. In a That's sense, true. Especially, yeah. That makes sense. So um, as a whole, you seem to say that people are quite optimistic about being able to go to vote, even if this is really the first time ever that elections will take place under these circumstances. Mm -hmm. So um, is there maybe another another insight from Korea that I, we could not think of from being abroad? Um, something that maybe could be an example for other Asian countries or even beyond Asia? Because it seems like it's very well managed from what you say. Yeah, I mean, I, I really hope that this could be a, a model uh, for a lot of countries because I, I know already a lot of countries in the region um, and other parts of the world actually are uh, postponing elections. And, you know, that's very detrimental to democracy. I mean, elections is a key uh, right for all of us to express, um, you know, our uh, you know, views and ideas. And it's, uh, it's essential to democracy and postponing it, um, I don't think is uh, the right way to go. And um, it, I think as long as you know, the government has the, once they prioritize that exercising our democracy is essential, I think there's always a way to go about it like the Koreans did, you know, setting up uh, just procedural, um, you know, systems, making, providing uh, hand sanitizers, gloves, uh, you know, disinfecting the booths. I think it's possible. I think it might be too soon to say now because we'll have to see after the elections to see if there is any uh, increase in infected because of, of the course. voting or, um, you know, or to see the real numbers to see how many people really did turn out. But um, just the way the Koreans went about it, uh, at least to, you know, sending the message to its citizens that exercising democracy, uh, because it, it was, uh, you know, it was difficult for them. It was a struggle for them to get it in the 80s. So uh, it, it, I think that instilled a lot of faith in the government and, uh, the importance of democracy to its citizens. Thank you very much. I think that's a very reasonable conclusion. And mm -hmm. I agree with you that we still need to see the afterwards, um, mm -hmm. especially the turnout and also uh, the health consequences of holding mm -hmm. an election. Only in retrospect will we be able to know if it's a success or mm -hmm. if after all they should have 
done it differently. But thank you very much uh, for your insights. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, and uh, so this is Sue from Asia Democracy Network, ADN. Um, is there any anything else that maybe you would like to bring up? Uh, no, thank you so much for the opportunity. This was very uh, fun for me as well, uh, just to kind of really look into uh, and sharing my observations on what's going on in Korea. Um, and, you know, I'm really hoping that uh, this becomes a good model. And I just do want to highlight that, uh, you know, the South Koreans did really accommodate to allow uh, for voting uh, for everyone, um, you know, regardless of uh, their situation. So, and they were very accommodating for that. And hopefully this becomes a good uh, case study for us later. I agree. Thank you very much. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that there is one category of South Korean voters that uh, is facing some restrictions is the voters abroad yes. because yes. Uh, of logistical and health mm -hmm. issues. Um, I believe the majority of the 180,000 voters registered abroad will not be able to vote this year. Yes. So I think this is something beyond the control of only South Korea um, that they were not able to do. So it also shows that there's no really a way to enfranchise everyone perfectly in these difficult situations. Mm -hmm. But it does seem like this is the, um, the only restriction really that we can identify directly related to the health situation. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll be in touch thank soon you. and have a good day. Thanks, you too. Okay.